Welcome back to Mercedes-Benz of Oxnard. This is Barry Rudin. I am the uh, cameraman today, as well as your host this evening. Let's take a look at the C63 Coupe. Now, everybody can go online and Google the specs and watch the Top Gears and YouTube and, and see what this car does and what it's all about. Um, but selling these cars here on a daily basis, I can tell you that uh, most people have already done that. And what they really want to know is, should I buy this car compared to its competitors? Why should I buy them? and um, what makes the car different, better, worse. They really want a, a real story, and that's what I'm here for. Uh, main competitors to the C63 Coupe are uh, Newcomer Cadillac CTS-V Coupe, and uh, I never thought, I'm 29 years old, I never thought in my lifetime that I would actually say a Cadillac is a, is a comparable vehicle to a Mercedes, so that is a new one. Uh, for me and a lot of the people in the market for the uh, for the C-Class. Also, the BMW M3. Uh, for a while, that was really the only car in its class. Uh, nobody offered a comparable four-seat, two-door, high-performance um, coupe that really was uh, sedan-like in its proportions. And also, we have the uh, Audi S5. Um, the, the S5 is definitely a, uh, a recent model, but Audi has offered a very competitive high-performance coupes uh, dating back to the Quattro um, uh, back in the uh, early 80s. So let's talk first about the, uh, the CTS V Coupe compared with the C63 Coupe. Um, styling. The C63 has classic Mercedes-Benz proportions, a short overhang in the front. It has a relatively short overhang in the rear. The doors are are shorter in length than most uh, coupe doors. It has a tall glass area, the greenhouse. So you've got uh, shorter doors but taller windows. The front of the car is low and aggressive and it has that uh, beautiful three-pointed star adorning the radiator grille. And around the back we have a very well-proportioned rear end. It just, it looks like it, it just flows into the car, and not only is it beautiful, but it, it's also functional. So, compared with the CTS-V, the CTS has a massive rear end. I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. And because the rear of the car is so big, if you stand next to a CTS-V, or even park it next to a pickup truck, the top of that deck lid goes almost to the, the top of a, uh, a pickup truck uh, tailgate, and it's, it's actually as tall as, or almost as tall as most people. Of course, I'm only 5'4", so that may be a little bit different from my perspective. The glass is so small out the back, you can barely even see, and if you sit in the CTS-V and, and look in the rearview mirror, uh, there isn't much you can see. Compared with the C-Class, you've got a nice big rear window, and there's just tons of visibility, uh, side window as well. Now, when you're driving a sports car, and I don't care if you're on the street on the 101, you're on, uh, on the racetrack out at Willow Springs or Laguna Seca, you need to have visibility because you cannot be an effective driver whether you're racing or just driving around, you know, going to work unless you can see what's going on around you. And, uh, and I know a lot of you are saying, well, wait a second, a lot, of, a lot of race cars, you can't see behind them. In fact, they don't even have rear view mirrors. Yes, I know that, but they have crew chiefs, they have pit crews, they have people talking into their ear on their radio saying, hey, by the way, this is going on around you. This is going on, on around you. They have eyes and ears. In your car, you don't have the eyes and ears, so you need to have visibility. The C63 has very reasonable uh, sized doors. As you can see, the hinges are, are pretty far back there in the chassis. They're not right up front by the wheel well like they are on most two-door coupes. So the doors are shorter. And because they're shorter, you can get into and out of your car a lot easier when you're parking in a uh, tight parking space. And also, if you take a look at the cut line in the rear door, it scallops up, and it's also just behind where the driver's seat would normally be. That way, it eases access into the rear seat. That rear window is nice and big, so if you have passengers in the back, they're not going to get car sick. Take a look at the roof line. See at the top of the roof here? See how much metal there is up here? That does a couple of things. First of all, the way that window tapers, the chrome trim around the window, it tapers in such a way to make you think that the roof line is more aggressive than it is. But in reality, the roof, the roof line, the way it slopes, is very gentle. So you still have uh, a decent amount of headroom in the back, and it's really, it's a lot of headroom for a two-door, that's for sure. And then around to the front, you've got uh, very subtle changes. Now, 
even if you're not into cars, you're going to see with those chunky wheels and the big red brake calipers that it's definitely a high-performance car, but unless you're a car enthusiast, you probably won't be able to pick out the, uh, the little details um, of the C63, and that's a good thing because, you know what, the, the police are going to be you know, less likely to target you as well as other motorists that, that want to drag race you. And if you've ever owned a high-performance car, you know what I'm talking about. You get people in their rice rockets, and they want to race you and egg you on, and they rev their engine. And that's probably not going to happen unless they're uh, a car enthusiast and know what they're looking at. With the CTSV, it is, it's pretty out there. I mean, it's flamboyant. It's got big um, you know, uh, uh, ground effects on it, and, and it's, a, it's a lot bigger car. So... Um, much more likely to attract the unwanted attention. Now, while we're on the outside, let's also talk about the M3 and the Audi S5. The M3 is very well proportioned. It's, it's beautiful to look at. Um, the M3 is more subtle. In fact, the new 3 Series isn't, isn't a sexy car. It used to have a lot of sex appeal. Uh, the E36 chassis 3 Series was one of the sexiest cars out there. And if you were a... Uh, a young lady back in the day, um, you wanted a 325 convertible. If you were a guy and you wanted a really sexy car to attract the ladies, you were driving an M3. And uh, people that just wanted a really nice car that had a good feel, um, that looked beautiful, they would buy a BMW 3 Series. Well now, BMW doesn't need to make a sexy car anymore because they have free maintenance. So a lot of people are going to buy the car simply because it doesn't cost them anything to maintain. It's a less expensive car to begin with, and uh, BMW uh, tends to approve uh, people even with very poor credit scores, um, similar to Toyota and Honda and a lot of the low-line brands. So that's, what they, that's how they attract a lot of their buyers now. Um, the M3, having driven the M3, um, it certainly didn't, didn't meet my standards. Um, back in my day, the E36 M3 was was the machine and when you drove that car the steering was so natural um, it had uh, just very natural weighting it was very precise uh, there was a lot of glass area that beautiful inline six just screaming up to 7000 rpm the chassis balance I mean I have never you know and I've driven all the AMG Mercedes and I've driven uh, Miatas and a lot of cars like that that are that are inherently well balanced but the E36 3 series the 95 M3 in particular where all four of the tires were the same size, nothing is as well balanced or as easy to, um, to, to drift as that car. And uh, this new BMW M3 just, just isn't that. The steering is heavy, but it's artificially heavy. It feels like the engineers dialed in weight just to give you weight because when you're driving at high speed, the steering wheel doesn't, doesn't lighten. The effort for the steering doesn't get lighter um, as you go faster and then weight up in the corners. Um, like it would naturally. It, it's just heavy all the time. Also, the engine is torqueless. The, the V8 and the M3 just doesn't have enough torque. So unless you're really up on the boil, right around 8,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM, maybe 6,000 RPM, um, it just doesn't have a lot of uh, torque to keep you moving or to rocket you out of corners. And on the racetrack, that isn't necessarily a, a bad thing because you're going to be in high RPMs. But when you're driving your M3 around and you see a gap in traffic and you want to uh, take advantage of that, you've got to go down a couple gears before you accelerate. With the C63 Coupe with that big 6.3 under the hood, not even a problem. I don't, I don't care what gear you're in. You can be in seventh gear going 45 miles an hour. When you tow into the throttle, that thing is going to move. I mean, it's going to move. The Audi S5 is not enough car. Uh, it's a six-cylinder supercharged engine. Um, it has over 100 less horsepower than either the M3 um, or the C63. And, and that car is really about uh, style and perception. Um, the perception of the Audi is uh, engineering excellence, the safety and security of quattro all-wheel drive, and also um, lower pricing uh, compared with BMW and, and Mercedes. Plus, if you're a Volkswagen enthusiast, um, it shares pretty much everything with uh, Volkswagen. So when you get in the car, everything's going to be where it's at, uh, where you're used to it. And that isn't a bad thing. But the S5 isn't really going to be uh, something that the car enthusiast that's looking for a high-powered uh, four-place car, it's just not something that, that, that someone like me would be interested in in, in, in the least. And um, 
Although a lot of people that come in and look at the C63 also mention the, the Audi S5, and they mention that the fuel economy is a lot better, and, and uh, the car looks uh, you know, very aggressive. It's not, it doesn't look like a four-door sedan version, and obviously the C63 is very similar in two-door and four-door form. Um, but in reality, when you get behind the wheel of the S5, it just doesn't have the, the power or the handling or the braking. And those of us that are car enthusiasts have watched the, uh, the fifth gear and top gear episodes. And when you're racing around a track in the rain, the, the Audi with the Quattro is faster than a Mercedes or a BMW with just rear-wheel drive uh, because of the traction you get with all-wheel drive. But you don't get the feel, and most enthusiasts would trade off uh, track time because track time doesn't relate to how you enjoy driving the car, neither does zero to 60 or even horsepower. It's all about how you feel behind the wheel, and in, in, in the Audi, you just feel a little bit too isolated and insulated, and it's really not for, uh, for a car enthusiast. So that is a brief overview, a very brief overview, of the C63 Coupe and the Audi S5 and the BMW M3, as well as the Cadillac CTS-V. And there are certainly honorable mentions out there. I could talk about the, uh, the Ford Mustang GT500 now with 650 horses under the hood and the uh, Chevy Camaro ZL1 and even the Mustang uh, GT and then the Camaro SS and the uh, Dodge Challenger uh, 392 um, Hemi. But uh, those cars, uh, while they certainly are excellent performance competitors, if you really want something luxurious, that's definitely not going to be on your shopping list. Um, spending uh, 50000 plus on a Chevy or a Ford, what happens when you take it in for service? They're going to give you a Focus, okay? <laughs> you take your C63 Coupe in for service, and they're going to give you an E350 or an ML350 or you know, a C250, something decent to drive. Or if you really feel um, like you want something uh, special, a smart convertible. Um, so, well, thank you for uh, watching. Have a wonderful evening, and tune in for next time.